Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Asking for Trouble, the game show where you got to be careful what you wish for. Today on the show from the Lean Into Art podcast, we got Jersey Droz and Rob Stenzinger going head to head to see who's the bigger overthinker. Uh, this is our first episode, so it sucks. I'm, I'm super sorry about that. I tried real hard. Here's your host, Ryan Estrada. All right. <laughs> welcome to Asking for Trouble. <laughs> I'm your host, Ryan Estrada. Today, for the first episode, I brought the two men who taught me everything that I know about uh, about live streaming content. We got Jersey Droz and Rob Sensinger from the Lean and Art podcast, leanandart.com. How are you guys doing today? Great. That was an awesome introduction. <laughs> uh, awesome, <laughs> awesome show intro. I got to copy that. That was great. Oh yeah, yeah, doing awesome. Thank you, Ryan. All right, so. Uh, Let's see, Lean Into Art is a, uh, a show. You guys want to explain what Lean Into Art is? Yeah, sure. So Lean Into Art is a, um, well, we have a whole learning network and a podcast that we feature to, um, uh, we like to dig into uh, interesting creative topics for visual storytellers. And, um, you know, sometimes we do that. Jersey and I will, will um, uh or we'll do it on our own. We'll take on a guest. We'll do things like anything from like uh, just thinking about design to uh, dealing with the the dimension of time on a comic page. So all sorts of things related to visual storytelling. All right. In addition to that, you guys have what about forty seven other podcasts between the two of you? You got uh, <laughs> comics yeah, are great. Yeah, Kids comics both. revolution. All kinds of podcasts. All kinds of other projects. Um, so this is a, uh, a trivia show about a bunch of weird and obscure topics. Um, what, what are you guys' uh, areas of specialty? Jersey, what do you, what do you, uh, what's your expertise? Expertise. Uh, probably something, that, if you want to call expertise like uh, being obsessed with something, then I would say probably kids' cartoons. Okay. Hmm. All right, Rob? Uh, I would say making interactive things and designing them. All right, um, so we'll see what your uh, topics are. We're going to jump right into round one. Uh, all right, round one. Here are your categories, and as the first one in the uh, Google Plus Hangout, Jersey gets to pick. Uh, which of these categories you want? We've got get out of the city, the nick of time, follow that bird, or road to Oz. Oh... I know that I'm asking for trouble by picking any of these, as the, the title of the show goes, but I do love that movie, Follow That Bird, so I'm choosing that. Follow That Bird. All right. Follow That Bird. Uh, so let me explain how this show is going to work. Uh, we have the two general knowledge rounds, which by general I mean not at all general, and extremely specific and weird. Uh, followed by the main event, which is uh, written just for the two of you. Uh, if at any point during the show you think about cheating, that is totally cool, but you got to tell me about it first. Uh, there are five opportunities to cheat between the two of you. Uh, anyone can use them. One of you can use them up, and the other might not get a chance, but uh, see what happens. Um, but you ask me first. You get to choose between check the web or ask for help, and the roulette wheel is going to choose who or what you get to ask. So we're going to jump right into the first category, follow that bird, which is, of course, following the filmography of filmmaker Brad Bird. Uh, our first question to choose who gets uh, to take, tackle the first question is a uh, numbers question. I'm going to give you a... Uh, a question, the answer is a number. Whoever is the closest without going over gets the first question. What is the Rotten Tomatoes score for Brad Bird's most recent film, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol? Anyone can uh, jump in we at just, any point? We just shout it out. Okay, I'm going to say yeah, 87. 87. I'm going to say $1. You're going to say one point? One point. One percent. All right, and Jersey is the winner. The score was 94%. Whoa. Yeah. So, one point for Jersey. So Jersey <laughs> also gets the next question. Before Joss Whedon stole the idea, 
Brad Bird also directed a superhero movie in which a visit from Samuel L. Jackson sparks a chain of events that leads to the heroes teaming up and fighting off robotic monsters in the middle of a city. What was the name of Samuel L. Jackson's character in this film? Frozone. Frozone. <laughs> Excellent. And the movie? The Incredibles. The Incredibles. All right. Rob. What was the name of the short film Brad Bird directed that started out as a deleted scene from The Incredibles? Um, is it the one with the lamp? <laughs> it's not the one with the lamp. It was on nope. The Incredibles DVD. Okay. Nothing? You don't got it? Nope. You want to cheat or you want to send it to Jersey to see if well, you can... Well, cheat. You got it. I'm it. It's clear. Uh, I, I, I know I'm the one who's going to be using these cheats to survive, so <laughs> I can, may I cheat, sir? <laughs> yes, would you like to ask for help or check the web? Um, I'll ask for help. All right, let's see who you get to help. Ask for help. We're going to spin the wheel. Mm. This app takes way too long to finish spinning. <laughs> And one phone call. You can use your phone to do whatever you want with. <laughs> hey. Well, <laughs> let's see. Um, I'm going to see if I can call my wife so she can search the web. Oh, that's pretty good. Perfectly acceptable. Um, what was the question again? The question is, the short film Brad Bird directed that started out as a deleted scene from The Incredibles. Mm. Hey, sweetie. It's me, Colin. <laughs> I'm calling you from a game show. Um, hey, um, so I'm, I'm using a cheat, and I need your help in answering a question. Um, I don't know if you have a chance to help. Um, but if you do, I need to know what is the short, fir short film that Brad Bird um, directed that turned into the film The Incredibles. It was it was a deleted scene from The Incredibles. Or a deleted scene from The Incredibles. Brad Bird deleted scene Incredibles. Yeah. No. Do you, Do you think you can search for that? I need to know what's the what's the name of that film. It sounds like he's done a lot, huh? All right. Well, thank you for looking. I'm getting my butt kicked, but I'm having fun. All right. Love you. Bye. All right. Um, that The answer would be, uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Jersey, you want to steal? Uh, I'm sure I'll steal, but I'm going to have to cheat now because this is out, out, right. outside of my scope of knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so I would like to cheat. Check the web or ask for help? Uh, I'm going to say <laughs> check the web. <laughs> Let's find out what happens if we do that. All right. Well, I don't know what happens either. <laughs> Let's find out. Hmm. Catch a TV tropes. Yahoo. Wolfram Alpha. That wouldn't help me at all. <laughs> <laughs> AOL.com. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I have to go to AOL.com. Oh, you have to go to AOL.com. All right. <laughs> no, I don't think AOL.com has ever helped anyone. <laughs> well, here we go. I'm at AOL.com, and I'm searching for Brad Bird short film Incredibles. Oh, wait. Short film deleted scene Incredibles. Let's see what AOL renders. Takes me to Wikipedia. Now, can I go to the Wikipedia oh, link can. from there? Yep. All you right. So, if you want, once you're there. Uh, multiplex deleted scenes review The Incredibles and The Iron Giant. And that's not helping me at all. And. Oh my gosh. Gordon McKelpin just got a shout out. That's his website. Multiplex. But I don't <laughs> think that's going to help you. <laughs> no, it, it was a, a multiplex deleted scenes. 
So uh, now I am on Moviepedia, and then it says, let's see, how long do I got here? Because it's a big article. Until we get bored with you. <laughs> All right. So, um, Bounden? Bounden? Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Wait, that Jack Jack Attack. No, that's a short film. Oh. Uh, what do you think, Rob? He, he gave us a false answer, then immediately jumped in with the correct answer. Are we going to get to him? <laughs> that's up to you. Um, I'm let you, you know, call it. I, I'm going to I'm going to be overly confident and say, yeah, sure, give him the point. All right. Oh man. I'll make it up. I I feel a second win coming. This is the benefit of being on the first episode of a game show. Is that you guys basically get to make up the rules that I didn't think about? <laughs> yep. Love All right. Tester. All right. So uh, this question goes to Jersey. What character was originally going to play be played by Lily Tomlin until Brad Bird recorded a temp track and his coworkers convinced him to just play the character himself? Oh, uh, 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 the the fashion designer, the costume designer, the outfit designer, uh, who was m- modeled after Edith Head. It was like Edna something or other. Yes, Edna. Edna Mode, also known Edna as Mode. E. Four points. All right, Rob. <laughs> Before Brad Bird took over directing Ratatouille, the film had a different name. What was it? Mm-hmm. Let's see. How about Chef Rat? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. (laughs) I'm out of my element. (laughs) Okay. Uh, All right. Jersey, you want to steal? Yeah, I'll steal, and I'm going to ask for help because I don't know the the answer to this one either. Why why didn't I cheat? I uh, got to remember to cheat. Check the web or ask for help. Ask for help, please. I want to find out right. how we can ask for help. Someone please design an app that does this but doesn't take 45 seconds to <laughs> choose. If I promise to do that, can I get like 100 points? <laughs> sure. Oh, one phone. Uh, we already did one phone call. I'm doing it again. Yeah, please. <laughs> I don't know who I'd call. I don't have any friends. Dramatic reading of audience comments. (laughs) All right. If anybody is watching live and knows the answer to this question, uh, go ahead and... uh, Tweet at me or Jersey or Rob. Okay, we have um, our comments so far are, I wasn't paying attention to the question. (laughs) And first episode, more like worst episode, and (laughs) Remy's Restaurant. Oh. Um, So anyway, uh, yeah, for those that weren't paying attention to the question, it was, that one was too easy. I can do better. The question was, before Brad Bird took over directing Ratatouille, the film had a different name. What was it? If you think you know the answer, tweet at Ryan Estrada. And uh, I will do a dramatic reading. It looks like uh, the only answers we have are Remy's Restaurant, I Wasn't Paying Attention to the Question, and First Episode, More Like Worst Episode. Thanks for the um, help, everybody. Unless someone has <laughs> tweeted at Jersey, let me... Uh, I'm checking mine yeah, right now. Go for it. Nope. Nope. It's All just right. Jersey, so... <clears throat> so, what's your, what's your final answer? Uh, my final answer is I'm going to have to go along with... Uh, I think I saw Courtney Hahn said Remy's Restaurant. All right, and that is incorrect. <laughs> Thanks, Courtney. The answer was rats. Rats? Rats. It was called rats. Mm, Charlie Brown. All right, and uh, 
Sorry, Jersey, I'm slow looking it up. <laughs> okay, okay, I've, I've lost, after all that, I've lost track of whose question that actually was to begin with. That was Rob's originally. All right, so Jersey, what number Pixar film was Ratatouille? Oh. Uh, I'm going to say it was the seventh film. That is incorrect. Ah. Rob, you care to steal? Mm. Can I... Let's see. So each time... We're using a cheat every time you're doing the spinning the wheel and stuff, right? Correct. We've used three. I should have been keeping track. I'm the host of the show. <laughs> you know, I... It sure, I'll steal it. It, it, and, and I will uh, cheat. You'll cheat? I'm gonna he, Jersey was very close, so... Um, Hmm. Oh, if you want, if you want to cheat though, you can check the web or ask for help. Oh man, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I, I'm gonna ask for help again. All right, ask for help. Hmm. What in the world is that? Omegle.com <laughs> is basically chat roulette, chat roulette um, version with uh, just typing. Hmm. <laughs> so you can go to Omegle.com and uh, ask someone there. Make sure to read to us what their response is. Okay. Meet strangers with common interests. What are you into? Um, yeah, well, it, it, it was started well, out... It was started out for reasons exactly like this, um, but basically, right now, it's used for 4chan kids to to insult each other. So we're going to see what happens here. Let's see. So I could try spy question mode, and I hit check it out, and uh, egad. Okay, I got to not read what's on the screen. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. The question My, is, what number Pixar film was Ratatouille? Okay. Um, hey, I'm on a game show, <laughs> and I need help. What, um, let's see, what number Pixar <laughs> movie was Ratatouille? That's a hard one to spell. Ratatouille, yeah. R-A-T-A-T-O-U-I-L-L-E. And I'm adding a lot of exclamation points and question marks. <clears throat> hmm. Let's see. And so what I again what I said is, hey, I'm on a game show and I need help. What number Pixar movie was Ratatouille? On oh, the stranger says, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to read the other things in this chat. Yeah, I'm sure. I've 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 tested it and I was told a lot of things that I could not say on the air about my orifices. But they but they at least replied and didn't yeah. they didn't cross topics thankfully. So, all right, hmm. um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna guess um, because Jersey was close. I'm gonna say ten. I'm sorry, it was the eighth. Man. Oh. <laughs> But That's Rob, you got thing. insulted, so you know. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> I got some life experience out of it. Okay, and next question goes to Rob. There is a street mime in Ratatouille that is actually a cameo of the villain from Brad Bird's other Pixar movie, The Incredibles. What is that mime's name? There was a mime in The Incredibles. Oh my God. I got a cheat in Ratatouille, or there was a mime. Had, in, yeah, um, there was a he. He was a character in uh, The Incredibles and had a brief cameo in Ratatouille. So let's see. I think um, I need to cheat, sir. Okay. Well, look at it this way. From the look at his face, Jersey doesn't know, so no one could get this point. You could save the cheat oh. for something worth uh, more All points. All right, fine. Nope. You know what? As fun as it is to cheat, that thanks for yes. I will. Uh, I, I think I'm just going to say I'm sorry. I don't know the answer. Now let's hope that that the jersey wasn't uh, wasn't bluffing. Jersey, you want to steal? Uh, I can give it a shot, and I'll say Silent but Deadly. 
Sorry, the answer was <laughs> Bomb Voyage. Bomb Voyage, that's right. Mm. Oh. Uh, next question, Jersey. In which yes. Brad Bird movie was the titular character played by Vin Diesel? Brad Bird movie with Vin Diesel. Man, I am not up yes. on my filmographies. Uh, Can I see Chronicle the... Chronicles of Riddick? I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Actually, Rob, no. it looks like you want to steal. Uh, the Iron Giant. That is correct. Oh, my God. I knew an answer. <laughs> yes. I saw a movie 10 years ago. <laughs> Woo. I forgot that was Vin yeah. Diesel. That was Vin Diesel. So, Rob, let's see how far your Iron Giant knowledge goes. The Iron Giant was originally supposed to be a musical. When Brad Bird was brought on to direct, the first thing he did was cut out all of the music, even though it was written by the executive producer. Who was it? The executive producer of The Iron Giant, who is a musician, hmm. who also um, wrote an album called The Iron Giant. Oh, uh, phew. let's see, a musician, see, oh man, that's that's a toughie, uh, gonna have to, hmm, I'm trying to think who would be, oh, I don't know. I'm just going to say, like, Eric Clapton. I have no idea. Nope. Jersey, you have any uh, ideas? I know I know the story of why he wrote the book and who it was for, but I don't remember his name. I'm totally blanking on it. So It wasn't the author thinking... of the book. It wasn't yeah, the, the author of the book. No, it was not the author of the book. It was oh. the musician who turned that into a rock opera. Uh, but then Brad Bird was brought to direct and said, screw making a rock opera. Okay. You're fired, Meat even loaf. though you're my boss. No, it was Pete Townsend. Pete Townsend. Hmm. Okay. Go. All right. The Who guitarist. Yeah. All right, and Jersey. Brad Bird refused to carry on the Pixar tradition of the Pizza Planet truck cameo when he directed The Incredibles, but he did carry on his own tradition, featuring cameos of what two old-school animators who also appeared in The Iron Giant? These are two animators who appeared in both Iron Giant. Yeah, they're two of the nine old men from Disney, yep. yes. I know who they are, but I'm, I cannot remember their names. Oh, I'm going to have to give it to Rob. I do not know who these guys are. Or I don't know their names. I know who they are, but I don't know their names. Is it like... Uh, oh, I can't remember their last names, but there's... Uh, is it like... Um, hmm... Chuck and Fritz or something like that? It was two Disney animators, Frank and Ollie. Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston. Yeah. Mm. All right. So the next question goes to Rob. Ethan Hunt's code number in Ghost Protocol was A113. This is an in-joke that has appeared in almost everything Brad Bird has ever done. The in-joke is also shared with several other directors. A113 is actually a room number in what building? Hmm. Have you ever seen that uh, A113 thing? Do you know about it? I don't, but I, I, will, uh, I will guess a building. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say it's the... Um, it's, a, it's a room in like... A, Let's say it's a it's a fancy hotel in Hollywood. Let's see if I like how close I get. Nope, it is not. Jersey, do you know? Um, no. <laughs> is 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 it? It's at uh, uh, Pixar Studios. It's not at Pixar Studios. It was. It was the room at Cal Arts that all of the Pixar directors uh, had the same class in. That's where they all met. Um, room A113. Cool. If you look at any Pixar movie or any movie made by anyone in the same class, a lot of people at Disney, you'll see it on every uh, license plate number. Every time there's a number anywhere in the movie, it's A113. Wow. All right. Next question. Brad Bird directed a secret Michael Jackson music video. While the video was released for years, he was legally prohibited from telling anyone that Michael Jackson wrote it. 
What was the song? This is Jersey's question. I believe. Yes. Oh. It wouldn't be Captain EO, so let's see. You got to dig a little bit more obscure than that. Oh, uh, we only got one cheat left, don't we? Yeah. Michael Jackson did not perform the song; he wrote it. He wrote the song, and it was a music video. It was a music video directed oh. by Brad Bird. <clears throat> directed by Brad Bird, and uh, if he wrote it, man, my my music video knowledge goes up to about 1987. Uh, I'm going to. I guarantee you know the song. It was my jam back. It was my jam back in the day. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, God, I'm thinking the warrior. No, that is incorrect. Oh, that was a great video, though. Rob, you care to steal? I will try. I will attempt to steal. And um, just trying to capitalize. See, what I'm trying to do is guess what was Ryan Estrada's jam. And so I'm going to go with uh, Bust a Move. It was not Bust a Move. I'm sorry. It was Do the Bartman. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson actually called up the producers of The Simpsons and told them, I want to write a song for you. I want to produce an album for you. But because of my contract with my uh, distributor, you cannot tell anyone about it. Wow. <laughs> That's why he, he also, uh, there was that episode where Michael Jackson played a crazy person who thought he was Michael Jackson, and they were not allowed to say that Michael Jackson played the guy who thought he was Michael Jackson. Oh, wow. that's, that was an awesome episode. <laughs> and I dropped the ball on that, forgetting that Brad Bird was associated with The Simpsons or directed some of the better episodes of the early seasons, yeah. Okay, well, speaking oh. of Simpsons, Rob, Brad directed two episodes of The Simpsons. Both, both of them revolved around the same character in season one. The first episode was about the character's legal trouble, and the second was about his family problems. Who was the character? Hmm. It's legal trouble and then family problems. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say Ned Flanders. No. Jersey, you care to steal? Yeah, sure. Bart Simpson. Nope. It what? was Krusty the Clown. Oh. He directed Krusty Gets Busted, and then... Oh, I forgot the name of the second episode. Uh, when Krusty meets his father. Oh, Jackie Mason plays his father. Yeah. And yeah, he, don't darken my door with your comedy. Yeah. All <clears> right. <throat> and uh, Jersey, Brad Bird directed the pilot to a Tim Burton-created sitcom. What was the name of that show? Tim Burton had a pilot for a sitcom? Yes, he did. And it was produced as a show. It couldn't be The Charmings. Uh... <laughs> I'm just trying to dig back. Like, uh, uh, this, this would have to be the mid to late 80s. Um, out of this world? Nope. Oh. That is correct. Rob? I'll give it a shot. Um, I'm going to say, um, let's see, mid to late 80s. I don't know, I'm just, uh, how about uh, a different world? Incorrect. The answer is family dog. Family oh. dog? Wow. Is okay. this what became Frank and Weenie? Uh, no, he, he did use the exact same design of the dog for Frank and Weenie, but, um, no, it was, was his own, uh, creation. Uh, speaking of family dog, it was originally, it was actually a backdoor pilot, which means, although it became a series on its own, the pilot originally aired as an episode of a different show. Which show was it? It's Rob's question. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, let's say, uh, man, I have no idea. How about, uh, Beavis and Butthead? No, it wasn't made. Oh, Jersey didn't get a chance to steal yet. <laughs> I'm a terrible host. 
<laughs> Your contempt for his answer was so strong. You <laughs> 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 didn't no, understand it was... <laughs> how little. It was made in something. Uh, God, I don't even know either. Uh, made in. Made in. Made in the USA. I don't know. I, I don't know. All right. The what I was saying was amazing stories. Amazing stories. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. That was uh, Steven Spielberg's anthology show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I do recall that. Okay. All right. The final question for this round is a speed question. I'm gonna give you. Uh, I'm gonna ask a question, then start giving the various examples. As soon as one of you knows the answer, yell out, yell it out, and you get five points. Okay. So, which star of a future Brad Bird movie played all of these characters? These are characters that this actor has played. Mike Morris, Lynn Cassidy, Harry Ferrer, Jake Geismer, Bob Barnes, Jack Taylor, Jack Foley, Captain Billy Tyne, Captain Charles Bosch, Colonel Jack Grady, Lip Sinking Transvestite, Sparky the Gay Dog, Seth Gecko, Ryan Bingham, Fred Friendly, Everett McGill, and Danny Ocean. Hank Azaria? Billy no. Ocean? No. <laughs> the answer is George Clooney. Really? Oh, my word. Well, Clooney characters. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. It's been 50 minutes, so do we want to skip the second round and go right to the main event? All right, we'll go to main event. All right. Sounds good. Let's go right to main event. Uh, all right. The main event has been written just for you two. Screen share. It is on the topic of He-Man and Heavy Metal. <laughs> Jersey, your c- categories are I Have the Power, Rock On, nice. Whiplash, and Faker. Rob, your categories are Skeletons in the Closet, Live at Last, Twisted Sister, and Toys in the Attic. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Jersey has the lead. So go ahead and choose a category. Okay. Uh, I'm going to choose Rock On. Rock On. All right. Rock On. This category is about heavy metal songs with rock in the title. (laughs) I didn't say which categories I chose for each of you. Uh, Uh, (laughs) What was the first track of Def Leppard's 1983 album Pyromania? Oh my god. Remember, this is heavy metal songs with rock in the title. Oh, uh, I know, I know. I, 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 Jersey cool, shot. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh. <laughs> Rob's about to right, fit to burst. I'll pass because I don't know it. I don't know. You still got a cheat. Uh, still one cheat left. Or you can I'm, I'm going I'm to hang it. on to that cheat because Rob doesn't need All right. it. So. Rob? <laughs> rock, rock till you drop. I'm sorry, it was Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages? What? <laughs> Rock of Ages was song one? I had the cassette, and I guess I lost track. Oh, well. All right. <laughs> <laughs> was, okay. Was there more than one song on that album with the word rock in it? Yes. <laughs> All right. I don't actually know about these topics. I just looked at Wikipedia. But it was, it was track one, according to Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh... Rob, you want to choose your category once again. Here they are, Skeletons in the Closet, Live at Last, Twisted Sister, and Toys in the Attic. I just am super curious about Skeletons in the Closet. 
All right. Skeletons in the Closet, which is, of course, The Secrets of Skeletor. <laughs> Skeletor was a normal human before his face was splashed with acid. What was his name? Keldor? That is ah. correct. <laughs> you dirty, dirty dish rag. That was mine. That was a, that was a softball. <laughs> that was really difficult. <laughs> Jersey, you can choose. You can also choose the same category. There's multiple questions for each category. Uh, no, I want, I want to try Faker. Faker. <clears throat> All right. Faker is a category about fictitious metal bands. Man. Uh, which fictitious group is created credited with the creation of the following fake albums? Shark Sandwich, Smell the Glove, Intravenous de Milo, and Brain Hammer. Final tap. That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> I know about fake metal. <laughs> All right, Rob. You can choose a category. All right. Sure. <clears throat> how about man? Uh, how about whiplash? Those are Jersey's categories. Oh, I can't pick whiplash. Okay, how about oh. live at last then? Makes it live easier. at last. All right. Live at last is Questions about the 1987 live-action Masters of the Universe film. Oh, man. Who played He-Man in the 1987 live-action Masters of the Universe film? <laughs> Dolph Lundgren. That is correct. I must break you. <laughs> Wrong movie. Jersey? Yes. Um, Choose category. Okay, give me Whiplash. All right. Whiplash is questions about the many people who claim to have invented headbanging. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Gillian says it is a definite possibility that he invented headbanging. What band did he front at the time he claims to have invented it? What was Ian the name Gillian. Then? Ian Gillian. Ian Gillian. Uh, he invented it. it was kind of I don't know who Ian Gillian is. Somebody's going to take a shot in the dark and say uh, uh, Sex Pistols. Incorrect. Rob? <laughs> I actually don't know who he is, but I'm going to try to guess a band that would be from the uh, mid-70s. I'm going to say uh, Rainbow. Incorrect. Deep Purple. No. Oh. All right. And... Should've. Rob, a category? You know, how about uh, Toys in the Attic? All right, Toys in the Attic is a question about He-Man action figures. If you were trying to find your old He-Man toys in a darkened attic, which one might be easiest to find since it glows in the dark? Um... I'm going to say uh, Trap Jaw. Incorrect. Jersey, you want to steal? Yes, I do, and his name is Scareglow. That is correct. <laughs> Their names Jer either sounded like medications or they announced what they did. <laughs> Jersey, a category. Um, let's go for uh, I Have the Power. I haven't picked that one yet. All right. I Have the Power is a category about power ballads. Which band performed the power ballad November Rain? Oh, um, the guy with the really whiny voice who pushes pianos out of windows. Uh, Guns N' Roses. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob, your category. Uh, let's see. How about uh, Twisted Sister? Twisted Sister. 
is, of course, questions about He-Man's twin sister, She-Ra. He-Man never knew he had a twin sister because she had been kidnapped, brainwashed, and lived on what planet? Planet Etheria. That is correct. Okay, this is the final round. You remember, you have still have one cheat left, so either of you can cheat. Um, so there's more questions in all the categories you've already chosen. Uh, Jersey, your category, please. Um, let's go. I have the power again because I got the last one. All right. I have the power. On which Led Zeppelin album was the power ballad Stairway to Heaven? Uh, uh, Led Zeppelin. I don't know anything about their album titles. They weren't the guys who did physical graffiti, was it? <laughs> was it physical graffiti? Somebody's going to uh, hit me on the head. I don't, I don't know anything about not. music. It was not. Rob? Was it Houses of Holy? It was not. It was Led Zeppelin 4. <laughs> mm. And Rob, your final category. Hmm. I'm going to say, oh, man, let's go. Gosh, I, this, is, this is a toughie. How about, uh, I'm going to risk skeletons in the closet. All right. Skeletons in the closet. What was the name of Skeletor's purple velvet flocked pet? Uh, mm. Mm. Was it like Fang? It was not. Jersey, mm. care to steal? I would care to steal, and his name was Panthor. That is correct. The answer is Panthor. <laughs> and the winner of the first episode of Asking for Trouble is Jersey Droz. Oh, despite my complete ignorance of music. Yes. I attempted to clap, and I knocked my mic over. What do I win? Nice. Uh, well, the, uh, the terms that you guys agreed to before the show was that you are the biggest overthinker <laughs> on the Lean and Art podcast. Wow. Uh, so thank you for watching. The, uh, the prizes on the show may suck, but there is a prize for the viewers. Uh, we have a game just for the viewers called Six Clicks. Uh, here's how it works. This is a game. It's very easy. You can win it literally with six clicks of the mouse. Um, it's kind of like the uh, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon game. But uh, we're doing it with websites, and I want you to find a way to, within six clicks, get from one website to another. Uh, I want to do it today with the two websites that inspired my two big projects right now, uh, leanintoart.com, which inspired me to do live shows, and the Humble Bundle, which inspired me to do the whole story, pay what you want bundle. So I want you to go to leanintoart.com and... Find a link anywhere on the site that leads to another link. And within six clicks, you should be from leanandart.com to humblebundle.com. I did it in four. Uh, you might be able to do it more or less. Uh, if you have the answer, email me. The winner gets the entire $60 prize pack from uh, thewholestory.com, the dash whole dash story.com is the name your price comics bundle that I'm doing right now. That includes over like 1,600 pages of comics it's at right now. Plus, I'm going to mail out uh, a bunch of books and prize packs and stuff to you. Just email me with the answers, ryan at ryanestrada.com. And if anyone can beat, I did it in four, if anyone can do it in less than four, I will send you also a second prize pack. Wow. Uh, so... Yeah. That's the six clicks game. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show, despite all the hiccups and uh, and me being kicked out repeatedly of my own show. Thanks to Jersey and Rob for being my guests. Thanks to I'm gonna mess up the name, Anna Managuchi for the theme song, and uh, 
Thanks, everybody. Tune in next time. We're asking for trouble. <laughs>